Hello everyone! Welcome back to my channel! Um, today I am so, so excited to share one of my Make 9 garments. It's a little bit of a twist on one, but I am so happy with it and I cannot wait to share it with you. And I'm so excited! Before we get started, if you like videos about sewing, fabric hauls, what I plan on making, what I have been making, pattern reviews, things like that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell to be notified when I have another video. And that's it, let's get started. Anyway. I hope you guys are all staying safe wherever you are with all the snow and the crazy cold weather that everybody's having. Um, before we get into my Make 9 garment, I want to ask you guys a question. So Amy from Amy Nicole Studio and I are going to be together next week hanging out. We are uh, the best of friends. <laughs> we talk every day. <laughs> um, and we are so excited to be together and so I wanted to ask you guys if you have any questions for me or for Amy um, she's a pattern maker if you don't know I will put all of her links down below um, if you have any questions for either of us or for both of us we are going to film a Q&A video and I would love to hear comments down below of what you want to know from us I um, so obviously I have three kids I have a full-time job um, I love to knit also we both love to read we both love to knit actually and we both love to sew and she of course makes gorgeous patterns and she's got a new one coming up soon which I'm so excited about anyway so she has all that knowledge behind her um, also um, owns a restaurant with her husband and a couple other interesting things so if you want to check her out I will put a link to her YouTube down below and please 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 give us questions because <laughs> we can't do a Q&A without questions so all right so I'm gonna get into what I made I made a blazer okay I know I said I was gonna make the Jessica blazer and I already have done the first muslin I have the second muslin cut muslin cut out haven't put it together yet I got distracted by something else really pretty so <laughs> Friday pattern company came out with a Heather blazer um and I like knee jerked downloaded it I was like oh my gosh this pattern is amazing it's an oversized blazer a little bit so I kind of like the vibe of it I kind of like the oversized part of it I know with it being a little bit more oversized that it wouldn't be as difficult to fit and I wouldn't really need to muslin it because I've made a billion of her patterns before and I kind of know what size I am in her pattern I ended up making a size small and oh before I talk about it I'm gonna show you pictures it is so gorgeous and then I'm gonna tell you all about the fabric and all about how the sewing went you love the pictures by the way here it is in real life Aww. just have it give me a hug okay so <laughs> the fabric oh my gosh it is so gorgeous and I was a little skeptical I had got it from Minerva.com the only reason I was skeptical is because it had a lot of polyester in it it's a polyester wool blend and um, I wasn't sure if I would want that much polyester because I definitely want it to be super warm but I can tell you it's very very warm is very breathable um and the fabric is gorgeous it behaved so beautifully it had um I had no trouble pressing it um this is awkward <laughs> I had no trouble pressing it I used a clapper 
which I can link one down below. Um, but, but basically I used my steam iron. I got a new steam iron actually, and I can um, also link that down below. But I used my steam iron whenever I pressed a, a seam. I used my steam. Sometimes, um, first I checked to see if it was going to stain anything or ruin anything in my wool or melt anything, and it did not. Um, and I started kind of using a press cloth just to make sure, but then I realized I didn't really need it because it wasn't burning. Um, my setting was on wool. Um, it was doing well with the steam and so I, I didn't I kind of abandoned the press cloth but I had to kind of try that out first um, and then once I pressed the seam I used my clapper put it down kind of let the seam cool and let the clapper like absorb the um, moisture and then your seam just is so beautifully pressed so this fabric behaves so well um, and you're probably wondering what the lining is so I am not let me repeat this. I am not a huge fan of any linings that are polyester, number one. Number two, I don't like slippery linings. <laughs> they feel great, but they're so annoying to sew with. And so probably almost every single jacket I've made, I use like a cotton lawn or like a really nice cotton that's kind of like got a sheen to it um, that is a little bit more slippery. Um, sometimes I'll use a rayon, which can, you know, it's not quite as slippery as like a really slippery um, poly lining. Um, and yeah, so those are the things I tend to go for and I've never had any problems sliding my arms in and out. If you were concerned about that, you could just line your sleeves with a, you know, a polyester lining or a, um, a really slinky lining, um, and then do the rest and whatever you want. But I just lined the whole thing in this. It is a Liberty cotton lawn and it is so beautiful and I love the flowers inside. I love the pop of color and yeah it's just gorgeous so the sizing for this pattern like i said i've made our patterns before i made a size small um and it was plenty of room plenty of room in the shoulders i can wear a sweater like this underneath no problem um so i really like the oversized um style of it i love the length but you can obviously kind of muslin it and try it on and see if the length is going to be good for you the pockets are so simple they're just patch pockets and they're so gorgeous and then let that lead me into my next subject which was now that we've talked about fabric let's talk about plaid matching so i don't know what came over me but i decided to figure out where the pocket placement was going to go on my front pieces and try to make the pocket match perfectly <laughs> so here's my pocket but we'll just pretend like you can't see it because it matches the plaid matches so well so I really wanted this jacket to look really sleek I didn't want it to look like it had a patch pocket even though I'm fine with patch pockets but I really wanted it to be like kind of in disguise and be a surprise and so that's why I spent so much time matching the plaid um what i basically did for that because that's kind of a weird plaid matching thing i guess <laughs> what i did for that was i took the pattern piece folded back the seam allowances and kind of like placed it on the front pattern piece where the where the markings were and then i decided okay so it, it, the top is this line the side is this line and then i basically put it on my fabric and, figure, and match the lines and then cut it out i know that sounds confusing but I promise you it's not that bad um, when I was matching the plaid just for the main pieces this fabric is like two-sided like it didn't have a right or wrong side so what I basically did since I knew I could turn any piece over and it could still work like since there wasn't a right or wrong side I cut out the front piece and to get a front piece that was exactly identical to the other front piece, what I did is I just moved the pattern piece over, left it facing right side up, I didn't do a mirror image, and I used the pattern piece I'd already cut out, laid it on my fabric, and basically just <laughs> made sure that it looks exactly the same and like lined it all up on the edges. So that's a really easy way if you have double-sided fabric to basically just cut it exactly the same. Um, and then, you know, as far as matching the front and the back piece, 
um, at the side seams. I, you know, the front piece has notches. I looked at the notch, decided, okay, this notch is gonna line up with this line on the plaid. Okay, so on my back piece, that notch is gonna line up with the same part of that dominant line in the plaid. And that's basically how I did it. Now, I didn't really worry about where everything was as far as like, you know, this way, but I made sure that the strong horizontal lines, um, didn't really worry about vertical as much, but the strong horizontal lines matched all the way around um, on the jacket. So if you see, like here is a collection of kind of a smaller plaid section with these strong brown lines. And if you follow it around, that's still like that on the front. So that's basically how I matched all of those things. Um, I didn't worry about the facings and all that kind of stuff. You do have to, I did try to match the front with the facing there so that it would kind of continue. But as far as getting it to be exactly the same, like, like stripes, I didn't go crazy with it because I knew it was going to be folded out. So, but I tried to make it similar. Um, sleeves, I don't really worry about matching as much. It's very hard for me and it really frustrates me. And like, you can see it like almost matches there. But I feel like almost like th this section almost matches right there. But I feel like when it almost matches, it almost <laughs> looks worse. So sometimes I just don't even try to match. You can see it almost matches there too. But then I'm like, well, it almost matches, but it doesn't. So now you're like, oh, I wish that would match, you know, but it's fine. It doesn't bother me. There is a seam in the back. I didn't need to adjust it for any reason, but I made sure that my plaid would match there. And this. I really did kind of pay attention to where I was in the plaid um, vertically because I really wanted it to look like there wasn't a seam. So that was the only part that I really, really paid attention to it. Um, and that's it for that. I used like a 9014 needle um, with this fabric because it wasn't super thick. Um, I have a walking foot built into my faff machine, so I didn't really need to worry about that. If there was like a lot of fabric, it helped like walk it forward. So if you need to use a walking foot, I mean, that's always a good idea, I think. Um, I forgot to mention the sleeve is two parts, which I think is great for fitting. Um, it looks really nice, and I made sure that the seams match there as well. Um, the pattern is so easy, you guys. I mean, it's not the easiest garment I've ever made but she has such good instructions and now there is a sew alone video and I'm like this is amazing like everybody can make a blazer with a sew alone video you can totally make this blazer it's not that hard it's not that hard to fit there's a lot of room it's very swingy um and yeah I think that's pretty much it I have a little right up here so let me just make sure i hit all the proper points oh the interfacing make sure you follow her instructions she has you put knit interfacing on some areas and woven interfacing on others and i feel like that was a really good idea and i really liked that part of the pattern because it really helps you know interfacing um in certain areas needs to be um bendable and movable and kind of be able to move with you and so i really like how she specified where to put it and i like what she picked because i feel like it was really smart for the pattern and also forgot to mention this whole front piece is interfaced and i don't know if you guys remember but i made another blazer a long time ago and i made it out of tinsel twill, tinsel twill which is probably not the best idea <laughs> but only parts of it were interfaced and so the tinsel twill was kind of like warping and stretching a little bit and like like kind of hanging and then the part that was interfaced was not moving at all but then it was kind of like relaxing into itself and it looked so bad i've since gotten rid of that blazer um but if I had made another one out of tinsel twill, it probably would be fine because the entire front is interfaced. And I think that is so amazing. It makes the jacket look really crisp and nice. And it's so easy. You don't have to like cut extra pieces. Like you just cut the whole thing is interfaced. So I really liked that. I really love her patterns. I've been making them forever and 
every every choice she makes is so smart it's so good so i don't think i can say enough good things about it um so i hope you guys enjoyed this video i love this this is gonna count as my make nine blazer i still want to make the jessica blazer but i worked hard on this i was so excited about it i made it so fast and i'm giving myself a big fat check mark for checking this off my list because i deserve it and it's so lovely and the colors are amazing and they match me today um by the way this is the fiber moon mabel top and they just released all of their new patterns um for issue 13 and this is one of them and it's made out of blackbird fabrics um cotton sweatshirt or french terry um with kind of like um a taupe ribbing because i couldn't find anything to match <laughs> so i just changed it and then i'm wearing a long sleeve turtleneck with just some cotton jersey it's the monroe turtleneck so and it looks fabulous and this whole this whole thing could be an outfit and it would be way warm because I'm already really warm, but this would make me 10 times warmer. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I am so excited about stuff that's on my sewing table right now. And I cannot wait to share it with you. I have a fabric haul coming up. I have a, another jacket that I'm making that's not on my make nine because as I said, I get distracted easily. Um, I will be meeting up with Amy soon and we will film our Q and A. Don't forget about the comments down below. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to be notified when I have another video and hit the like button so more people can find it. Um, and make sure you check out um, the sew along for this blazer because even if you're afraid to make it, if you just watch the video, it makes so much sense. You will, it will help boost your confidence and you will totally be able to do it. And of course you can ask me any questions, but I would email Friday Pattern Company as well because she's amazing and she will be able to answer all your questions. So, um, let me know if you have any questions and I hope you guys have a fabulous day and I'll talk to you later.